Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. H.L. Mencken said, The urge to save humanity is almost always only a false face for the urge to rule it. Power is what all messiahs really seek, not the chance to serve. In 1989, the United Nations said we only had 10 years to save the planet from global warming. They said there was going to be an exodus of eco-refugees and the Maldives were going to drown. Since then, the Maldives and other island nations have grown up to 8% in size. Also in 1989, the British Commonwealth said, Governments must yield national sovereignty to multilateral authorities. They said sea level was going to rise between 1 and 4 meters by the year 2030. Underlining the report's message is that we must be ready to nurture tomorrow's concepts of global governance. None of the disasters they predicted happened, but almost 35 years later, they're still pushing the global governance idea. Today is the first day, and how, how was it for you? It's been great. Um, so, um, so I've been uh, fortunate uh, to be part of the uh, Schwab Foundation, and it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, organization. Oh, so I, I saw some of the sign saying that uh, we need kind of like uh, we need to put in action before, for example, climate change. Like we need to change before climate changes. Correct. So uh, are we running out of time? Well, I think the scientists tell us that we only have a few more years. I think it's like eight years till, till uh, it's irreversible. So we, are, we don't have a lot of time. Let's put it that way. What do you think uh, we can do to make it faster? So until, until there is that push by governments to create a regulatory environment that really you know, creates a forcing function and incentive for people to make those hard changes, I'm not sure we're going to see the change in time. In 1989, we only had 10 years to save the planet from global warming, and we needed global governance to stop it. 34 years later, we only have 8 years left to save the planet from global warming, and we need global governance to prevent it. Al Gore says that unless we give up our self-governance to the World Economic Forum, we will lose our ability to self-govern. And the accumulated amount is now trapping as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day on the Earth. That's what's boiling the oceans, creating these atmospheric rivers and the rain bombs and sucking the moisture out of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had. And we need have had and we need to make some changes. And the mayor of London says, never mind massive human rights violations. The real problem is global warming. The leaders here at the World Economic Forum, because you know, as we've seen in China, we saw them go for that zero COVID policy. They were even locking people in their own homes. Like, does that not concern the leaders here? Human rights issues are always a concern for leaders and businesses around the world. But also, you have to understand, the biggest challenge facing the world is climate change. No surprise that the mayor of London isn't troubled about governments locking people in their homes. A couple of weeks ago, the Biden administration said California was having the worst drought in 1,200 years and it was caused by global warming. But now, Al Gore says that California is too wet and it's caused by global warming. California had their worst flood during January 1862. 4,000 people died, one-third of all property in California was destroyed, and a quarter of the state's 800,000 cattle drowned or starved. They had to move the state capital to San Francisco, and the state of California went bankrupt. Eggs cost $3 a dozen, which is $79 adjusted for inflation. But at least you could still buy eggs, which I haven't been able to do the last few times I went to the store. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said the floods were caused by a series of atmospheric rivers. For 40 days, they kept coming, bringing warm rain and high winds. 
All of the fresh Sierra snow melted, turning frozen creeks into raging rivers as the water poured downstream. It was too warm for the snow in California during January 1862, but that doesn't seem to be a problem today. Eco-refugees are always a big part of the global warming scam. Twenty years ago, the UK government's chief scientist said it was going to get too hot everywhere else and we were all going to have to move to Antarctica. But Antarctica looks a little chilly to me, and I think I'll take a pass on that suggestion. The discussions about climate from these people are complete nonsense, but there's one theme which always stays the same, global governance. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this power grab for the past 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.